Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And today I'm excited, I'm really pumped to talk about automating your lighting with backing tracks. That's right, this month here on Learn Stage Lighting, we're talking all about lighting automation and really how to do it and why to do it through various means. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're a band or a church or a DJ on a smaller scale, anything you can automate is going to help you to make a better show or service, right? If you're a small church, like I tech directed a small church, and I don't have the amount of volunteers that I would need to assign someone to be dedicated to lighting. If you're a band, you may have a few lights to set up and you don't have the room in the budget to have somebody assigned to running the lights during the show. If you're a small DJ, it's, it's a similar thing. And even if you're a theater group, maybe you have people that you could train to run lighting, you could get them to do so. But at the end of the day, if there's a way to make it happen automatically, wouldn't you rather do that? Of course. And that's what we're talking about today. That's why we're talking and we're focusing in on automation itself because there's, there's so much good stuff in here we get to talk about. And so today, uh, just looking at my notes here, we get to talk about, okay, how to automate lighting with backing tracks. So in the last video, we talked all about how automation's the secret to great lighting and, and we covered all that and I just reset some of that here. Um, and now I wanna talk about backing tracks, okay? Um, in the next two videos, this one's going to be backing tracks. The next one's going to be automating without backing tracks. And I want to cover both of them here because I think, first of all, when we think about backing tracks, our first inclination, if you haven't used them, is that they're going to stuff you into a, a rigid framework, right? That, um, you're going to be stuck, you know, having to start the song, you know, and play it all the way through and then be done. And that's really not the case, okay? And it doesn't have to be with modern systems, okay? The other misconceptions you have with backing tracks, you know, is, is just that, um, that if you want to pause it, you know, you want to go off beat, you can't do that, okay? So here's what we're going to do, is I want to look at a couple methods of running backing tracks and then talk about how to synchronize your lights with them, okay? So first and foremost, you can use your backing tracks very simply to play through a whole song. And this is a very popular way of doing it. Um, for example, I, I've got this program called Live Tracker that I reviewed here previously, and you can catch that video here, that does a really great job with this, allowing you to play the track, play video along with it, lyrics, and also MIDI files as well. Now, in Live Tracker, at this point at least, you still can't generate MIDI files, which kind of frustrates me, but I'll have a link below to Live Tracker where you can buy it and I'd get a small commission if it's the right thing for you. Now, they have a, a totally free trial that allows you to do five songs. It's completely unlocked. You just can only do five songs. Um, and that can work really well for running backing tracks. When you're in a situation like that and, you know, you've got something. Actually, let me just open up Live Tracker here. And you've got, so you've got Live Tracker popping it open now. And you've got the ability to, in their editor mode here, I'll, I'll pull it pull it up here, to go ahead and I just pulled in a, a random video from my other YouTube channel. But, um, you know, you've got your song, you've got any video, you're able to bring in MIDI, clicks, lyrics, um, so that you can read, etc. And it's really simple to be able to just arrange them super simply on a timeline and then, you know, go back into your track view, save your changes, put, put your show in order, hit play, and things just happen. As you can see, things just happened there. And it works really well. Um, when you're working with a program like this, you're probably going to go ahead and set up a MIDI file, which I do in Ableton, which you can probably see behind here, um, to send a MIDI change, to send some sort of a MIDI signal every time you want your lighting to change. Now, what MIDI signal you use is going to depend on what you're using for lighting, okay? Different programs are going to look for a different type of signal, and potentially uh, the way you lay out your lighting is going to change what signals you send, right? 
are you sending the same MIDI note over and over again to play forward through cues in a, in a cue list or in a, a bank of presets that you have on your lighting software? Or um, are you sending a unique, a different note every time you want to fire something? Or maybe you send a note to just go next, 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 next. There's a lot of different options there. Okay. Um, but besides MIDI notes and, and besides running it through a program like Live Tracker, we can also run through a program like Ableton, which I've got up here as well. And the way that Ableton works, oh, this one doesn't have anything in it. That's okay. We'll pull up a test file. Um, the way that Ableton works is you basically have two views here. You have this view that comes up here first, and I totally forget the name of it. It's called um, Session View, I believe. And then you've got this other view, which I believe is called Arrangement View. Let me just make sure I got my names right there. As, as you can probably tell, I'm not the world's foremost Ableton expert, but I can get around. Okay, so you have the two views here. You can switch them on the side or with the tab key. And what you're able to do then is literally have tracks that are just MIDI, have tracks that are just audio, and you bring different clips together here in Ableton. Okay, so here's one, for example, with the program DMXs, and I can bring in that clip. It's got some MIDI notes on it. I can repeat it, etc. The cool thing about Ableton is if you use uh, this view, which I believe is called Session View, I'm probably getting this wrong, is that you then can have your different songs horizontally or different segments of songs, and you can fire through different clips at different parts of songs. And so this is where it gets really powerful, where you can go ahead in here in Ableton and go, okay, you know, here we're going to go, we're going to do the chorus, and then you can repeat it in Ableton again. Sometimes drummers have a, a pad that they hit to hit the different parts of the song, okay? And, and you're able to do this really well and, and, and have it work great. And the cool thing about it is then you can repeat different parts of songs. You can go out of order. You can, um, you're not stuck in a rigid, you know, backing track that's just stuck, right? Not only that, you can make an extra mini clip at the end of your song, say, to fire the lighting for between things, and you're good to go. Okay, so what does it take uh, to, when we talk about applying it to lighting? I mentioned just a minute ago. What does it take to apply lighting to backing tracks? Well, there's a couple different parts that you're going to need to make this work. The first, of course, is the backing track program. We showed you here Ableton Live and Live Tracker. Um, both are great options. There are, of course, others out there. Uh, one actually that I think about is uh, Playback from Multitracks.com, which is aimed at the church market, um, but can work for anybody. And you, you basically are just looking for something that can play things back and that can send usually MIDI notes for automation. Now, as we go further into the future, we see more and more applications supporting OSC or open sound control, which is generally better for the type of things that we do here with lighting. Okay. So if you have that ability to sound, send open sound control, stick with it. Okay. Um, I see it on the roadmap for live tracker. I'm sure it's coming to Ableton. I think you can do it with plugins anyways. And ultimately, the type of information you send, whether you're sending a MIDI note, whether you're sending OSC, whether you have the choice is going to be dependent on the lighting console you use, right? Because here, as you guys know, I teach a number of different consoles. Like we've got Entex DMX's program and their new Emu. And these ones both work really well with MIDI notes, okay? Um, DMX's, for example, has specific MIDI notes if you're looking to trigger a specific scene. But if you're just triggering the up or down the previous or next scene buttons, then you can map that to any MIDI note, okay? Something like Onyx uh, has a MIDI note macro setup where you just go in there and you define, you say, okay, this MIDI note's coming in. You can even watch them come in. You click on it. You say, okay, assign this MIDI note to fire this cue or to fire this playback to hit go, etc. okay? Onyx also offers OSC um, and Lightshark, which I, I use, uh, works with both as well, though it is easier to work with OSC. So at the end of the day, um, to wrap this up, I know it can be a confusing, it can be a lot to look at, okay, backing tracks, MIDI, lighting consoles, etc. cetera. Um, but you really want to, if you're working on figuring this out for whoever you work with lighting for, whether it's a band, church, theater group, whatever, um, the first thing to look at is, okay, 
how do you want to automate your show? You want to look at a couple things when you're doing that. So the first is the lighting console. Can the lighting console or software, or how can the lighting console or software I'm using or that I'm going to use, how can it accept commands, right? Can it accept those commands via MIDI? Yes or no. Or OSC, maybe both, maybe you have the choice. Then from there, you look at backing track programs. And you say, okay, I'm going to run backing tracks. Do I need to run video alongside it? And can my program do that, right? That's a, that's a key consideration. Or am I looking to send MIDI to fire some kind of video player, right? Um, do I need to repeat certain segments or would I just like a simpler program that's just going to fire, play the track and fire the MIDI as I go along? Okay. These are the questions that you need to ask and uh, are a little bit deeper than we have time to go into this video. However, inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, we have a full course and action plan called Automatic and Live that walks you through how to do all this stuff. From choosing the console, figuring out the best way to communicate with backing tracks, and making it all work together, we've got it in there step by step. Not for you? No worries. Grab my free guide to begin with lighting right here on this screen. Check out Learn Stage Lighting Labs below, and also check out this video. Uh, one of the tools I talked about this video, Live Tracker, which may be the right tool for you. I did a review here. So check it out. Thanks.